Hey there, fourth grade. Today we are going to be rounding decimals and we're gonna look at two strategies for that. One of those is using a number line and then the other is our rounding roundup song that we used at the beginning of the year and we're gonna change it to do it with decimals. So first let's take a look at a number line and I'm using a website here called mathisfun.com and they actually do have a zoomable number line where you can click and see what's in it. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some numbers as soon as it loads, kind of slow this morning. Um, we're gonna take a look at some numbers and zoom in between them and see what's there. So looking at our zoomable number line, um, if I just take the scroll key on my mouse, that scroll button and zoom in, it's gonna allow me to see what's in between these whole numbers. So in between the whole number four and the whole number five, it's now dividing it up into tenths. Um, so I can take the numbers in between four and five and divide them up into tenths. So this would be four and one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five, six, seven, eight tenths, nine tenths, and then back to five holes. If I actually keep scrolling, it will label those for me. There we go. So I've got four over here and five over here. And notice it's been divided into ten sections, and those are called my tenths. Now, if I take my tenths and I zoom in even closer, in between those tenths are my hundredths. So in between four and five tenths and four and six tenths, if I divide that up into 10 sections, now these are gonna be hundredths. Another way to think about that would be to think about this as four and 50 hundredths, add a zero to the end, so it's 50. And over here, four and 60 hundredths, um, add a zero, so it's 4.60. And then if I zoom in, it helps it make a little more, more sense. So here's my 4.5, 4 and 5 tenths. And over here is my 4 and 6 tenths. And again, it's labeled in between there, 51 hundredths, 52 hundredths, 53 hundredths, and so on up through 4 and 6 tenths. And then I can zoom in even further. Let's go ahead and take two of those hundredths, 54 hundredths and 55 hundredths. And if I zoom in on those, now I've got thousands. So kind of hard to see. Um, so here's my 4 and 54 hundredths. And again, I can add a zero and make it 540 thousandths. And over here, 55 hundredths, I can add a zero and make it 550 thousandths. And so when I zoom in, there it is. There's 4.440, 4.41, 42, 43, all the way up through 4.55. So you can see the thousandths are in between the hundredths. The hundredths are in between the tenths and the tenths are in between our whole numbers. So that's how that works. So now let's take a look back at my PowerPoint. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and sing the rounding roundup song. Now we learned this. Hang on, let me grab my guitar. Um, we actually learned this um, when we were rounding whole numbers. Um, and now we're going to take that same song and we're going to learn it for rounding decimals. So let me sing it for you and feel free to join, up, join in. I'm going to sing it a couple times. Rounding, round up, rounding, round up. Underline the rounding place. Circle the digit to the right. If it's four or below, keep it low. If it's five or above, give it a shove. from our whole numbers, there's only one line here that changed. Um, when we did whole numbers, we said everything right of the underlined digit um, becomes a zero. But here with decimals, we're actually going to drop that section. So we're going to drop that number. So let's go ahead and sing it again. Sing along. Don't be shy. <laughs> Let's 
right, good job. I'm gonna make you sing it one more time. Come on, sing along. No one else can hear you. No one else is listening. But it'll help it this get in your brain. Here we go. Round in, round up, round in, round up. Underline the rounding place. Circle the digit to the right. If it's four or below, keep it low. If it's five or above, give it a shot. Everything you got to be underlined. So let's go ahead and take a look at rounding decimals. And again, I'm gonna have you look at it with a number line first, and then I'm gonna show you how that number line relates to these steps of this song. So let's start with rounding to the nearest whole number. I have the decimal three and two tenths. I'm gonna find it right there. Rounding to the nearest whole number means I'm rounding to the ones place. So since I'm rounding to the my ones place, the two ones that are that what, three and two tenths is in between are three and four. Those are the whole numbers, the ones place. And then I need to look at that decimal and where it is in the number line and then decide is it closer to three or is it closer to four? And of course you can tell that this one would round down to three. Let's try another one, three and seven tenths rounded to the nearest whole number. Again, I'm gonna find three and seven tenths on the number line. It is just like three and two tenths, it's in between the whole number three and four. And then I simply look at my number line and decide which one it's closest to. And it's obviously closer to four, so it round up to four. This one is also rounding to the nearest whole number, um, but we're rounding the number 17 and 83 hundredths. So this is a little trickier to find on this number line because this number line is counting by tenths. There's one digit after the decimal, but the number I'm trying to put on the number line is actually in that has the hundredths. So the first thing I would need to do is figure out about where this would fall on the number line. So here, this part right here is 17 and eight tenths, and then it's got three more hundredths past that. So that means it's gonna be on the number line in between 17 and eight tenths and 17 and 9 tenths. So I'm going to zoom in on that part of the number line. And of course we know that in between those tenths are the hundredths. So this is 17 and 8 tenths, but I can also think about it as 80 hundredths. And think about this one as 90 hundredths. And then in between that I would count 81, 82, and that's where 17 and 83 hundredths would fall on this number line. So going back to this number line, it looks like it's gonna be about there. It's closer to 17 and 8 tenths. Okay, so now that I did that, let's get back to our original problem now that I've put it on the number line. This still wants me to round to the whole number, not the tenths place, the whole number. So the whole number are those ones place, and 17 and 83 hundredths is in between 17 and 18. Those are the whole numbers. And then as I look at that, you can definitely tell that that is closer to 18. So 17 and 83 hundredths rounded to the nearest whole number is 18. Now that we've done it that way, we've just got the answer 17 and 83 hundredths goes up to 18. Let me show you how we'd solve that same problem using the steps of our rounding roundup song. So same problem, 17 and 83 hundredths rounded to the nearest whole number. So the first step is to underline the rounding place. Now it's the whole number, so we're gonna underline the ones place. Circle the digit to the right. There it is, the digit to the right is the eight. Now, that circle digit is what we're gonna use to decide whether the underlying digit stays at seven, so it stays at 17, or whether it's closer to 18 and will round up to 18. So again, I'm choosing, I'm using this underlying digit to decide where it falls on the number line and whether it's going to stay at seven or go up to eight and 18. So. If it, the rule is, if it is four or below, keep it low. So if, if it's five or above, give it a shove. So the circle digit in this case is an eight, and that is above five. Since the circle digit is above five, we give the underlying digit a shove. So remember, it is the circle digit. We follow these rules using our circle digit, and then we decide whether the underlying digit goes up or stays the same based on what this was. 
So if it's four or below, keep it low. If it's five or above, give it a shove, which means this goes up one. Now everything left of the underlined digit stays the same. Everything right of the underlined digit gets dropped in a decimal, and that is different. Since we're rounding to the whole number, we're not gonna have any decimal part left over, so we just leave it blank. And that's the rounding roundup. Let's try another one. We're gonna do it with the number line first. We're gonna round 17 and 45 hundredths to the nearest whole number. So again, we need to find this on the number line first. This number line is counting by tenths, and the number that I'm trying to find is in the hundredths place. So I'm gonna to have to zoom in on my tenths place number line to figure out where this goes. So this is going to be bigger than 17 and 4 tenths, but smaller than 17 and 5 tenths. It's going to fall in between here in the number line. So let me zoom in on that section of the number line. And again, if it helps you think through this, I can think about 17 and 4 tenths as 40 hundredths, and this as 50 hundredths. And now I'm going to figure out where that 17.45 is. So this is 1740, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45 is that where it belongs, and you'll notice it's actually halfway between 17 and 4 tenths and 17 and 5 tenths. So putting it back on the number line, it should fall right there. Now I can go back to my original problem here, and it's telling me to round to the nearest whole number. So let me find those whole numbers. There's 17 on this side and 18 on this side. And then I just look at this and decide which one it's closer to. Remember our rule is if, if this is 4 or below, we keep it low. And if this is five or above, then we would give it a shove. So this number is just shy of being 17 and 5 tenths, but it's still in the 4 tenths. And so that means that it is going to round down to 17. Let's go ahead and try that with the rounding roundup song. Same, same exact problem, 17 and 45 hundredths rounded to the nearest whole number. So we underline the rounding place. Whole number is the ones place. Circle the digit to the right, which is that four in the tenths place. Now remember, it's gonna be the circle digit is what we use. So if it's four below, keep it low, and that's what it is, it's four below, so we keep it low. If it was five or above, we would have given it a shove up to eight, but in this case, it's staying low, staying the same number. Everything left of the underlined digit stays the same. Everything right of the underlined digit gets dropped in a decimal. That's the rounding roundup. Let's try rounding to the nearest tenth. So now my number line is looking at tenths, and I'm going to use that same number, 17 and 45 hundredths. This time, though, we're rounding it to the tenths place. So we already figured out that it's halfway between 17 and 4 tenths and 17 and 5 tenths is 17 and 45 hundredths. Again, this would be 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. And then I just need to look at it and decide which one it's closest to. This one is actually smack dab right in the middle. And if you remember our rule, um, it really could, since it's right in the middle, go down or go up. It's right smack in the middle. But the rule that we use in rounding is that if it's five or above, we give it a shove. So in between these two hundredths place, it is closer to 17 and five tenths. And so that means our final answer is 17 and 5 tenths. Let's try that same problem, and we're going to do it with our rounding roundup song. So again, we're rounding this to the nearest tenths place now. The last time we worked with this number, we were rounding to the whole number. Now we're rounding to the tenths. So here we go. Underline the rounding place. Circle the digit to the right. If it's 4 or below, keep it low. If it's 5 or above, Give it a shove. So remember, it's the circle digit. And we're going to decide whether the circle digit is 4 or below. If it is, we keep the underlined digit at 4. If it's 5 or above, like it is here, then the underlined digit gets a shove up 1. Everything left of the underlined digit stays the same. Everything right of the underlined digit gets dropped in a decimal. That's the Rounding roundup. Let's try another one to the tenths place. Now we've got 17 and 83 hundredths rounded to the nearest tenth. When we rounded this number earlier, we rounded it to the nearest whole and got 18. 
Now we're going to round it to the nearest tenth. So it is in between 17 and 8 tenths and 17 and 9 tenths. And it falls right here, 17 and 81, 82, 83. The two tenths place that it's in between are 17 and 8 tenths and 17 and 9 tenths. We decide which one it's closer to. And that 3 right there tells me that the 8 should stay the same at 8 instead of bumping up 1. So our final answer is 17 and 8 tenths. Try it with our song, Rounded to the Nearest Tenth. Underline the rounding place. Circle the digit to the right. If it's four or below, keep it low. If it's five or above, give it a shove. Everything left of the underlined digit stays the same. Everything right of the underlined digit gets dropped in a decimal. That's the rounding roundup. And now that you get the, the hang of it, let's go ahead and jump right to using the song. We're going to round to the nearest hundredths place now. So I've got a new number for you. We're going to take a look at the number 12 and 357,000. So 357 crumbs. And we're trying to decide whether that's going to be closer to 35 bites of pizza or 36 bites of pizza when we're looking at the hundredths place. So we are going to underline the rounding place. This time it's the hundredths. Circle the digit to the right. Now remember, our circle digit is what we're going to use. So we're going to use this green rule right here with our circle digit. And then that will tell us whether the 5 stays the same, keep it low, or whether it gets shoved up to 6. So if it's 4 below, keep it low. If it's 5 or above, give it a shove. So it goes up to 6. Everything before the underlying digit stays the same. Everything after the underlying digit gets dropped in a decimal. That's the rounding roundup. Let's do one more example before I have you do your decimal puzzle. So we're rounding to the nearest hundreds place here. Underline the rounding place. Circle the digit to the right. If it's four or below, keep it low. If it's five or above, Give it a shove. Everything left of the underlying digit stays the same. Everything right of the underlying digit gets dropped in a decimal. That's the rounding roundup. All right, you're going to go ahead and try your decimal puzzle that is rounding for today. Um, and I think you're really going to love the results of this. Really put your heart into your puzzle. Um, and I did give you a big favor in that in your decimal puzzle, I went ahead and underlined ahead of time all of the rounding places for you. So you just need to circle the digit to the right um, as you go through it. And your parents do have the answer key for it. So if you need some extra help from them, they can look that up for you and help you out with it.